Because of the vast amount of population on this planet, death is a common occurrence. Causes of death range drastically due to the many variables that push the hands of fate, and because of this, the odds of something spectacular or absurd happening is possible. So, here are 8 of some of the strangest ironic deaths I could find. Cactus plugging is a favourite pastime of some people. Cactus plugging is the practice of vandalising or destroying a cactus, usually a saguaro, for fun. Typically, the cactus is cut open, drained, then packed with explosives and ignited. In other variations, the vandal simply shoots bullets into the cactus's body until portions fall off or the entire cactus falls over. In 1982, Roommates David Grunman and James Joseph Sochochi decided to pack up their guns and go wandering in the desert two miles north of Arizona 74, just west of Lake Pleasant. They were struck with the brilliant idea of taking pot shots at saguaro they had found growing there, which are very large cacti. David shot a small saguaro in the trunk so many times that it thudded to the ground. The first one was easy, he cried, according to James. He next chose a specimen which stood 26 feet high, or just under 8 meters, and was estimated to be 100 years old. Before long, a 4 foot spiny arm severed by the blast fell on David and crushed him. It's good to note that Saguaro can weigh up to 8 tons. In Okazaki City, in the Alchi Prefecture, 23-year-old Takoya Nagaya was at his parents' house in the early hours of the morning on Friday. He started acting violent and erratic, claiming he was a snake. When his mother got worried, he called his father, Katsumi Nagaya, for help. To combat the snake that was supposedly taking over his son's mind, he did what any loving father would do. He proceeded to headbutt and bite his son, confessing he did it to drive the snake that had possessed him. The father's attempts lasted until the evening of that same day. However, in a twist of fates, instead of exercising the snake away, his son's body just went limp instead. With the injuries he had sustained, even after rushing him to the hospital, the injuries caused through a means to save his son eventually led to his death. Picture this, you're a Chinese chef making your usual meal of snake soup. You have the head chopped off of what was just an alive cobra. Whilst disposing of the severed head 20 minutes later, the snake jolts awake and bites your hand, injecting you with its poison. This is exactly what happened to Peng Fan, a chef in Foshan, southern China, who died after medics couldn't get the antivenom to him in time. Little known fact, all reptiles can function for up to an hour after losing body parts or even their entire body. In fact, there are videos which, for obvious reason I'm not going to put here, of a snakehead fully functioning and being demonstrated biting a stick repeatedly long after being separated from his body. Yang Hongchang, who has spent 40 years studying cobras, said, It's perfectly possible that the head remained alive and bit Peng's hand. By the time the snake had lost its head, it's effectively dead as basic body functions have ceased, but there is still some reflexive action. Though cockfighting is illegal in the US, California is a popular destination state for some people involved in the sport. Because raising the gamecocks, organising matches and attending fights as a spectator are classified as a misdemeanour on the first offence, rather than a more serious criminal offence. Even though it's lightly punished by the law, the punishment that Jose Lu Ochoa faced in 2011 was very severe. He was apparently a regular participant in organised cockfights, 
having already been fined for owning or training an animal for fighting. The birds in these events are equipped with razor-like knives in order to fight each other in the ring. Things got out of hand when one of the birds attacked Jose, stabbing him in the right calf. By the time Jose went to seek medical attention, it was too late and he died two hours later in hospital after sustaining his injury. Gary Hoy was a 38-year-old lawyer in the Toronto lay firm Holden Day Wilson. Hoy had apparently developed a fondness for showing off the strength of the building's windows and demonstrating his fearless trust. He would run and hurl himself at the window panes. His clients would see him bouncing off the window panes, leaving both the glass and lawyer unharmed. On a fateful day in 1993, Hoy attempted this feat in front of a group of prospective legal apprentices with disastrous results. On the first attempt, he came off as usual with Hoy harmlessly rebounding off the window. However, when Hoy threw himself against the pane a second time, it popped out of its frame and sent Hoy fatally tumbling 24 stories to the courtyard below. Although Hoy boastfully tested the boundaries of the window structure, Bob Greer, a structural engineer, stated, I don't know of any building code in the world that would allow a 160 pound man to run up against a glass and withstand it. People always tell you to eat healthy, but what happens when you take it too far? Well, in 1974, Englishman and health advisor Basil Brown went above and beyond what any human should do to keep a healthy lifestyle. Despite being warned by doctors about the possible effects this would do to his liver, and the fact his liver was already enlarged, he proceeded to drink a gallon of carrot juice a day because, and I quote, he had a low opinion of doctors. By the time of his death, the intense intake of carrot juice had already turned his skin yellow. Alongside the masses of vitamins he was taking with the juice, he was also taking vitamin tablets by the handful. According to sources, it was estimated that he was taking 70 million units of vitamin A in 10 days. And for reference, the recommended daily allowance of vitamin A for an adult male is 3,000 units. Lawyer, journalist, congressman, and the leader of the Copperheads, Clement Vallandigham, was opposed the Civil War and was banished to the South after being convicted of treason. On June 16, 1871, he was preparing to defend Thomas McGahn, a notorious thug on trial for murder. Vallandigham was arguing that the suspect murder victim, Thomas Myers, accidentally shot himself and was not murdered by McGahan. After returning from firing a .32 caliber Smith & Weston to study powder burns, Vallandigham was reminded that there were still three rounds left in the gun. Later, he was handed a new, empty revolver to be used in the courtroom as he entered his hotel. He placed both of them, next to each other, in the same room. Still amazed by the success of his tests, Vallandigham started explaining to a visitor that Myers had actually shot himself, which gave him the revelation to show the visitor instead. He pocketed one of the pistols, drew it slowly, turned the muzzle on himself, and pulled the trigger. Fortunately, his theory was right. Myers could have actually shot and killed himself in the panic of pulling out the gun, Unfortunately, Vallandigham did feel the harsh realities as his shot to the bowels inevitably caused his own death. In October 2003, Steve Jobs was diagnosed with cancer. He had a tumour in his pancreas, which the prognosis is usually very poor. However, Jobs stated that he had a rare and much less aggressive type. Despite his diagnosis, 
Jobs resisted his doctor's recommendations for medical help for nine months, a decision he would later on regret. He instead relied on pseudo-medical practices instead. His attempts consisted of a vegan diet, acupuncture, herbal remedies, other treatments he found online, and even consulted a psychic. As well as this, Jobs' biographer, Walter Isaacon, said he was also influenced by a doctor who ran a clinic that advised juice fasts, bowel cleansing, and other unproven approaches. All of these methods are very beneficial to create a healthy lifestyle to anyone. However, this went to show that being healthy doesn't constitute an alternative for proper treatment. Barriar Kasselith, chief of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center's Integrative Medicine Department, said, Job's faith in alternative medicine likely cost him his life. Going on to say, he had the only kind of pancreatic cancer that is treatable and curable. Before going on to say, he essentially committed suicide. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this dark list with a light twist, and if you did, leave a like. And if you want to see another list I made, click here for a list on 4 shocking Craigslist killers. I mean, people use this site to kill people. That's crazy, that's scary, this is a normal site people use. But anyway, click here if you're interested.